What's going on guys, this is Damien from The Lookout and I'm back with the final installment of Road to Nets, Road to Nets Black. Yeah guys, get ready, the first Nets, the first finals are this weekend, it's gonna be awesome. But before we begin the video, huge shout out to the Coffee Club, our lovely patrons. These are our $2 and up patrons, they buy us coffee, they keep this crazy grinding machine going. And guys, thank you very much. If you wish to join the coffee club, link to our Patreon is in the description below. And that's about everything. Roll the video! As with all of our videos, let's start with the breakdown. So it's time to get you ready for Nets. For the last time, let's do this. Which decks to play, rogue options, tech cards, and then we'll just wrap it up with a summary. Let's go! Let's start by asking the question, do you even want to play black? Yes! Black is in an amazing position. Black is absurdly good at the moment. Uh, what does Black have going for it? You have free plays with Overrealm, which is unique to Black. You have the second best aggro in the game. Yeah, Red is super aggressive, but Black has some insanely aggro decks. Uh, you have the ability to send cards to the warp, either from hand, field or drop. Yeah, depending on which deck you play. It's it's really insane form of removal, and you have one of the best negates in the game in the form of petrification. Let's start by checking out some data and some leaders. Let's start with the data. So here are the highest ranked black leaders across the last two meta games: SSG Trunks, Mexicabura, Fu, and SS4 Bardock. Now, please keep in mind that uh, the low numbers on uh, Mehi and Bardock specifically, even Fu to, to a, a degree, is because um, they only became meta relevant in the BT22 metagame. Trunks fell off, SSG Trunks fell off in this metagame, but he was the black deck for BT21. That's why the numbers are a bit weird, because I'm pretty sure that a lot of you remember Mehi just winning like crazy. And that's from the current metagame, not from the previous one. Anyway, none of these leaders were touched on the recent ban list, so we are considering all of them viable candidates for the event. Now let's take a look at the gatekeepers. Yes, we've done this for every video, but every video is someone's first video. So we have to cover this as well. Uh, these are the five big bosses of the event. Pen Reboot, U7 Goku, uh, Gogeta, Green Gohan and Mexicabura. We expect them to be the highest represented leaders from each color. And in order for your deck to do well, in order for you to top and to get high placings, you need to be able to beat at least a few of them. At least a few of them. If you can beat like two of them consistently, that's phenomenal. So yeah, please keep that in mind. Now let's go over the leaders. We are breaking them down into three categories. Meta, Competitive and Rogue. Meta leaders, the expected best leaders in the format. Mehikabura, the one and only leader that we are putting on the meta list. Not only the best black leader, but probably the best deck in the game at the moment. Like, if you ask me, and I think that a couple of other players will agree, that Mehi is by far the best deck in the format. Just by far. There are some decks that are close to the title, but I think none of them come as close to it as Mehi. Especially because Mehi has no silver bullets or anything. It's just an absurdly non-punishing deck. This is the one that I'm going to be playing. And I'm really, really awful at Mehi and somehow I still win. So, yeah. <laughs> anyway, what do you get with Mehi? You get amazing draw power. You get to warp cards from your opponent's hand, which is absurd, which is really absurd when you start doing that. You have the ability to steal cards, which is unique to Mehi. You have a crazy boss monster, like the boss monster is just value city. It's just value city, does everything. And you have the potential to awaken at high lives. So if you really high roll, you can actually uh, awaken it very, very high lives if your balls end up either in your hand or in your deck. Like, Mehi can awaken super fast. And it's really not punishing. Like, it's really not punishing to play. So, uh, yeah, the best deck in the game, I guess. 
Now let's take a look at competitive leaders, the second best choice. SS4 Bardock, the prismatic deck, the fan favorite aggro SS4 swarm deck. Very big in Europe actually, like there are a lot of players in Europe who love this deck. So what do you get with it? You get average draw power, the deck doesn't draw like an insane hand, but he has an every draw once you have all four cards all four colors then he can draw one with the leader swing he has cards that tutor he compensates a lot with tutoring instead of just hard plusing in hand but he also has a few cards which actually draw cards when you play them uh, he has access to all colors it's a prismatic deck so you have access to everything uh, tons of tutoring effects so many tutoring effects you have the Goku, you have uh, your leader on the Unawakened side, you have uh, SS4 Skull, SS4 Call, something like that. So uh, you have three tutors. Crazy. Uh, you have ton of cheap plays. Yeah, you have ton of cheap and or free plays. It's stupid how many cheap and or free plays you have. Plus, you have two amazing boss monsters, which you can discount. You can discount your two boss monsters. One of which uh, flat out wins the game. When your opponent is on one, you just flat out win. Yeah, and you have good in archetype counters. Uh, the Green Gohan counter is really, really good. And then you have the Bardock, which is a bit niche, but it can help you out against certain decks. Then we have SS4 Goku Zeno. SS4 Goku Zeno is so good. It's the most aggressive early game black deck in the format. I firmly believe that no other black aggro deck has as an aggressive early game as this one. Like This one is just crazy. Uh, what do you get with it? You get average draw power again. You don't draw like mad, but you have ways to draw. You get tons of free plays. This deck plays a lot of overrealm cards, so you get a whole bunch of free plays, especially because you get Wormhole Effect, which are the Migra Unison, which allows you to Overrealm twice in a turn. You have an amazing Z Extra card, which was a massive boost to the deck. You have a whole bunch of Critical Attackers. If you build your deck that way, you can have a whole bunch of Critical Attackers. And Critical Attackers are amazing. Especially if you like force a crit on like, someone and you take away one of their key cards. Um, and, of course, you have a potentially massive leader. Your leader is Double Strike. On the Awakened side, he has Double Strike. Plus, uh, during your turn, he can actually get, like, plus 5k, and then he can become this text. So he can get plus 5, plus 10, he can be huge. So, yeah, this is for Goku Zeno. Definitely worth checking out. Finally, let's take a look at some rogue leaders, competitive but unorthodox choices. The first leader on our list is Hatch. So probably the most hated deck in the entire game. No one loves to play against Hatch. Hatch is the fun police of Dragon Ball. Uh, what do you get with Hatch? Well, I can tell you what you lose. You lose friends. But what do you get, uh, get with Hatch is you get average draw power. Like Hatch has ways to draw naturally. He doesn't have an as explosive draw power as some other decks. Uh, you get a ton of negates. Like 90% of this deck is negates. So you just get a whole bunch of them. You get all of the negates ever. Nothing is ever swinging at you. Uh, no one but Hatch basically gets to play. Because you have a permanent that stops both players. But it's more annoying for your opponent. And just like flat out no one can play the game anymore. Uh, fun is now off the table. Completely. Because Hatch is the fun police. And... You can't attack in Dragon Ball, the game where you have to attack to do stuff. And the downside is that uh, both players die a little inside. Like both the Hedge player and the opponent die a little inside with each game. And finally, something that might be a bit controversial to put in Rogue, especially if you remember the data slide, SSG Trunks. This was the black top dog of the former metagame. And when I say former, I mean more BT21. Than BT22, and since then he has just fallen off completely. Uh, other black decks just do whatever he does, but better. Still, what do you get with Trunks? So you get great draw power. He draws a lot, uh, not an insane draw power, but he does draw a lot. 
he does draw more than some other decks. Uh, tons of free slash cheap plays. Yes, it's an overrealm deck, so <laughs> yeah, you will get free plays. You will get some cheap Saiyans to play as well. Uh, you have a very good Z leader. It's a 20k baseline Z leader. That's always amazing. You have great boss monsters, two of them. Both of them are hu are huge and amazing to play. Uh, but you have two crucial issues which is why this deck unfortunately keeps falling off and that is uh, that losing your unison hurts a ton it really hurts when you don't have your unison and you can get really screwed over by RNG really screwed over by RNG which can completely halt your awakening uh, we have seen this a billion times on stream where Trunks just can't get his five Saiyans he just can't get them for like three turns, four turns sometimes, and then he just loses. So just because of these, I don't feel comfortable putting it anywhere above rogue tier. You can be the best pilot in the world and the deck can still break. That's the big issue with SSG trunks. And finally, the briefest portion of the video, tech options. Let's get you ready for some difficult matchups. Okay, so we have just a couple of options here. This one is going to be very brief because there's not that many tech options in black. Uh, you have Ghost Warriors to just ruin blue. Yeah, it's a thing across all of these videos. You just ruin blue and that's it. Uh, you have your most important negates in the form of Petrification, the absolutely best single target negate in the entire game. And you have uh, Son Gohan, Hostels and Encounters. To help you out a bit. Uh, you have only one floodgate. Unless you are Hatch, you have only one floodgate and that is Oceanus. So if you're playing against Black, you can capitalize on this. On the fact that they don't really have floodgates. Uh, there is Protector of the People, which can be a substitute. Not, not necessarily a substitute for Oceanus. Nothing can actually substitute for it but it can be a quote-unquote semi-floodgate. And finally, the last thing, you really hate barrier. Black really, really hates barrier. And the best form of barrier removal is still black smoke. So if you're playing black, you're siding black smoke to get rid of barrier cards. And that's about it. Before we end the video, let's quickly jump into the summary. Black is a great choice for nets. There is a lot of very viable black decks, with Mehi being likely the best deck in the game at the moment. I think Mehi is by far the best deck in the game right now. Uh, Petrification will be your best friend going forward. Petrification is... Yeah, it's just insane. It's the glue that keeps Black together. I think without Petrification, you would basically end up like green without Charismatic. Like, not that good anymore. Um, there, are, there are still viable options outside of what we've listed in this video. There are still a lot of them. However, however, they are not necessarily meta decks, nor competitive maybe. Not necessarily. But uh, decks like Fu, for example, uh, Shroom and Salsa, either one of them, and Cumber are worth at least considering. Just at least considering to bring, for bringing two nets, but likely not as your first pick. So if you don't want to play any of the ones that are listed, or at least not the uh, meta and competitive decks, you might start considering some other options in addition to what we have listed under the row category. If you're going with Mehi, be prepared for players being ready for Mehi. So be prepared for everyone testing like crazy against this deck and you have to play it very 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 well but still is the least punishing deck in the game so you'll probably win the majority of your games by default anyway that's it for the video let me know in the comments below will you be playing black at nets which deck are you considering playing at nets if it's a black deck let me know in the comments maybe i've missed it Maybe there's something that you don't agree with, or you agree with everything. Let me know. I read all of your comments. I try to respond to everything. I love our little community. And guys, 
while you're here hit those like and subscribe buttons we are on our way to 4000 subs when we're gonna give away a booster box this has been Damien from the lookout and i'll see all of you in the next video